So this is my war bag, which I take on my trips. This is my borka for traveling on the roads in Afghanistan. This is the flak jacket, which we wear. The British soldiers like to make fun and come up and push you here. It could stop AK-47 and armor-piercing bullets. My helmet, phone, and that's been through many wars. First aid kits drips, um, bandages, if you get a gunshot or a knife wound, this clots the blood. And, most importantly, coffee sachets. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm packing this, you do think, you know, most people, <laughs> their right mind leave war. <laughs> Why am I going to where wars are? But once I'm on the plane, then I'm thinking about the story. I was 21 when I first arrived in Peshawar and started covering Afghanistan. I had no idea really what a foreign correspondent did. I took a big bottle of Chanel perfume, a big bag of wine gums, a Rudyard Kipling's book Kim, and that was more or less it. I basically kind of fell in love with Afghanistan right from the beginning. When I arrived there in 88, the Russians were still there. So then I started going back and forth into Afghanistan with the Mujahideen and started covering war. I'm incredibly curious. My mum would say I'm nosy. <laughs> I want to see things for myself. And I'm really determined. Like, there's nowhere I haven't got into. No is like a starting point, okay, for me. I want to tell the stories of people who have no way of getting their own stories told. If I see something that's really shocking that's happening, I want people outside to know about it, and I want them to know about it, because I hope that that will change. To me, you know, often the real heroes or heroines in the war are the people that are still managing to educate and feed their children. That's the sort of story I really want to tell much more than this sort of bang bang, if you like. I think in Britain we have a lot of interest here generally in foreign news. The Sunday Times has got a great tradition of foreign news. They're not afraid to go against the tide and say this is what's really happening. We have become targets in a way that we weren't. So, you know, if a soldier gets killed in Afghanistan, it's not headlines. Whereas if a journalist gets killed, it is. And, you know, it's been brought home horribly to us on the Sunday Times because we lost Marie Colvin in Syria. The most frightening thing that I've ever been in was in 2006, when I was the first journalist to be embedded with the British combat forces in Afghanistan. The minister had famously said that he hoped not a single bullet would be fired. They were going on a mission to um, a place called Zumbale, and I was saying to the commander, you know, what do you think about that? And he said, oh, that seems to go quite well. And literally, as he said that, the first shots rang out. Everybody just ran. We were all split up. The commander, we didn't know where he was. The radios weren't working. The Taliban were throwing the mortars into the ditches. All these bullets, things were coming over the top of us. It was incredibly hot. Every direction we ran in, we were being fired at. And I kept thinking about my family. It was going to be my son's birthday that weekend, and I kept thinking about that as I ran. At one point, this sergeant major asked me if I could use a pistol, because he said, we're probably going to get pinned down and we'll have to fight for our lives. And I realized that the guys I was with thought we were going to get killed. I really, really didn't want to die in that muddy field in Helmand. Nobody got hurt, and it was amazing. This ambush happened, I think, at Wednesday and Thursday. I managed to get back on Sunday. So I arrived at Heathrow, there's my story all over the Sunday Times. And then we went and bought 
bread and ham to make sandwiches for my son's birthday party. It was incredibly strange feeling to be there and to think that a few days ago I had been in this ditch with all his RPGs and gunfire. So this is a story. You can see there's some amazing photographs by my colleague Justin Sutcliffe. Nobody thought we were at war in Afghanistan, and so my editor realised the importance of the story and so gave me five pages, basically saying, you know, this is war. That's where it's great working for a paper like Sunday Times because it kind of really set the agenda back in England and in parliamentary questions were asked and in the end, you know, more troops were sent, more helicopters were sent. I hate that stereotype of the hard-drinking drug addict <laughs> um, correspondent that comes back and tells war stories in the bar. Um, having said that, you know, it, it is addictive, I don't, I admit that, um, and, you know, I've had far more than my nine lives already. <laughs> but yeah, as long as I still have that kind of curiosity and interest, and I will keep going. <laughs>